Good morning, guys. This is Stephen Howard and uh, my dog, Yucca. Say hi, Yucca. Uh, we're just chilling in the backyard this morning. It was a full moon last night. Uh, some pretty nice clouds today for the desert. Uh, they aren't chemtrails. They're actually real clouds. Um, I've been really sick. Uh, <clears throat> broke my fever last night. And uh, I feel like the day after, you know, where you feel like you've been run over. Uh, I'm going to go up and, and walk Mike's dogs pretty soon. Um, I just wanted to talk this morning a, a little bit about um, divine guidance. That um, a friend of mine used to say, It's not always the easiest path. Um, it's not all the, always the easiest path that leads you to victory. Um, sometimes you have to make hard decisions and you know in your gut what you've got to do. So, you know, instead of pussyfooting around it and, and just like, oh yeah, well... I'm pretty happy where I'm at and things will eventually improve and no, none of that. That's procrastination. Just go out and do it. If you make a mistake, failure is, is awesome. If you failed, it means you're one step closer to succeeding. So... <clears throat> Today's message is, is divine guidance. You know, what are you being guided? What are you being told to do? Uh, what What is your life quality? How is your life improving? Um, I imagine in a couple of months, you guys will see a brand new motorcycle in the garage and full Fox gear and a Nevada license plate so I can ride down and see my friends on the strip and ride over and see my my daughter and uh, try not to crash again. <laughs> um, try not to have any more injuries. Try to ride respectfully of the machine. Um, try to ride within your abilities and uh, within your equipment that you have. When you see these guys doing double backflips and crazy stuff, they've trained for a couple years. They don't show you that. They don't show you the pain and agony of being upside down, claustrophobic in a foam pit that's about to catch on fire because your tailpipe was hot when you landed in there. And you're upside down on your head and you have to have somebody come out and pull you out with a crane. And it takes three minutes for them to dig out the foam and get to your foot so they can hook onto you and get you out of there. Meanwhile, you're suffocating and having a heat exhaustion underneath the helmet and the gear and the foam in the foam pit. So they don't, they don't show you that all the time. They don't show you in desert racing that there's guys that ride 90 miles an hour for 110 minutes. Um, they don't show you uh, memorizing 197 miles of desert. Every bump, every twig, every corner, every curve um, by memory. So you could even do it at night. Um, I've been real dedicated to, to my path in the past three years, but it's led me away from my, my daughter, my family. Um, it's led me up to Montana where I got to discover what it would really be like to really live in a cool environment with nice people and you know, it still has problems. It still has evil people. It still has 
all the things that a major city has just on a smaller scale and probably a lot more um, whisper talk and people are bored so they gossip and they talk to their neighbors and um, it seems like uh, a lot of the disease that I see or the, the problems that I see in Montana um, are the same that are everywhere. It's, it's boredom, it's uh, addiction, um, but at the same time, what an incredible place to live. What a beautiful place to live. So um, I realize that every place needs healing. Every place needs um, positive restructuring. Um, and, you know, maybe some, like I was saying in my other video, maybe some places are happy the way it is. And, you know, Las Vegas, sin is, sin, sin city. It's looked upon as an adult playground, a place to go, you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Well, that, that's bullshit. Look at Tiger Woods. Um, I think the reality of it is if you can adjust your moral compass just because you're involved in metaphysics and spirituality uh, doesn't mean that the the lines of ethics are blurred it doesn't mean that you can go cheat on your husband or cheat on your wife or that you you uh have a relationship that is not on the up and up and you hide stuff from another person until they fall in love with you and then you break it off and it's a pattern that you have and you're a heartbreaker and uh, it could be me, it could be you, it could be any of us that we have this habit to, to go and, and make things right and um, they're not turning out right. They're not turning out right at all. And so it's real, you know, it's in the 3D, our hearts and our desires and what we want and lining that up with what the other person wants. And, uh, you know, uh, today, you know, in the 3D, we have beautiful cars, you know, really expensive cars and people have gotten so greedy, I guess, or, or, I don't know, you know, it's, it, is it self-love or is it greed? Is it ego? Is it compassion? You know, do you like yourself? Do you shave? Do you brush your teeth? Do you clean the stuff out of your eyes? You know, uh, I, I don't know what it is that I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm trying to take some elements and put them together and maybe you guys will put it together yourselves. Maybe, maybe you'll understand what I'm trying to get at. That, you know, I can live in a $600,000 house and drive a Mercedes 400 series and have really nice clothes that I just got off of the, the interweb. And uh, I listen to really progressive music and uh, I'm very inspired and I live on a high vibration and then all of a sudden, uh, everything goes to shit. And you, you start to wonder, was it me? Was it something that I did? It feels like I just did one thing. Like I said, one thing wrong. Or I did one thing wrong. I did a million things right. 